At the beginning of this first chapel of 2021, we would like to acknowledge that we work and study on Tree One land, the homeland of the Métis Nation and the traditional land of the Dakota, Dene, and Ashinaabe peoples. May we all as Tree people engage in collaborative work of learning and growing in unity and understanding. So happy new year. It's 2021, we made it <laughs> through 2020. Um, I'm gonna do a little painting for you guys today. So I hope you enjoy it. It's, um, well, I'll let you figure out what the scene is. I've started to pencil this out and uh, so I'm just getting started. But I, I, wanna, I wanna talk a little bit before I get started about um, uh, do-overs. Do you ever feel like you need a do-over or a second chance? And I feel like we all need second chances. We all need to do things again or we feel like we need to do things again because we've maybe messed up or we or we we feel we feel like we've we've failed in some way so um we're going to talk a little bit about that and right now i'm just going to start painting and so i i hope you enjoy it When we talk about mistakes and we talk about wanting to start over again, wanting to, to do the right thing, to, to, to be the right kind of person that God wants us to be, I think about King David. King David made a lot of mistakes. He, he messed up, he killed someone, he had someone killed. And, and, yet, and yet he was given second chances, he was given, um, a chance to, to make it right and to be right with God. And I, I mean, I take, I take courage in that. And I think we all should in that we, we never mess up too much for God. And you know what? I don't want to really dwell too much on, on, on our mistakes. I, I don't want to dwell on, on the past. I don't want to dwell on things that we've done wrong because that, I think that that's unhealthy. And I like to dwell on where do I go? Where do I go to find forgiveness? Where do I go to find peace? And how do I find that peace? And you know what? We can look at things that King David wrote. David wrote Psalm 23 where he encourages us to find the beauty and find the, the peace that comes from God beside green pastures. I often tell my students that we were, we were made to create, we were made to make art, to make things of beauty. When we look around the world around us and see the beauty that is everywhere, appreciate the beauty we realize God is a creator. God loves beauty. He has to, right? Look what's around us. 
if we're made in God's image, then we are also created to create beauty. Does that mean we always do? No. I look around us and I see beauty, but I also see pain and suffering and I see loneliness. God gives us the opportunities to rest in Him, to rest in His peace, and to rest beside still waters. I definitely find like when you spend time alone just working on art pieces, it helps you to feel a sense of peace and you can just Especially with like nature scenes, you can look at God's creation and just think, wow, that's so incredible. Like, how did he make that? And shepherd I won't be wanting I won't be wanting He makes me rest in fields of green with quiet streams I think by like painting or drawing like anything of God's creation, like a nature scene or even people, it can really um, show that you think that His creation is beautiful and special, and I think it really does like glorify God in that way. I think that God's nature is creative, and so if you look at um, what God has created, even ourselves, it's really beautiful and really detailed, and so I think when we use our gifts to create something like that. It's in some ways praising God. Comforts me, you are my feet. So many people in the Bible needed second chances, but that's not just because who they were, it's because who God is. God gives us second chances. He gives us third chances. He gives us a thousand chances. And we need them. <laughs> I don't know about you, but mess up all the time and I think we all do but that's the kind of God we have and but you know I don't really want to dwell on on that so much I want to dwell on um, what's next how do we where do we go from here how do we move on how do we bring our focus to God in our daily life and it's so easy to dwell on the negative things, the, the things that bring us down, especially in difficult times like it is now. Um, we, we really need to think about our life and who God is and how blessed we are. So there's a process that happens when I paint. And um, it always seems that I start to get drawn to the, the beauty around me when I start painting. I. I and I ask myself often, can I glorify God in art? Can I glorify God by simply painting or drawing or sketching? And I really believe so. I believe that there is something in us as Christians that must praise God. 
we need to reflect back on the beauty that's around us and the beauty that he created for us. And we often think that this can only happen with, with singing, right? Praise and worship times means singing, right? Well, maybe it means that we reflect back so that this beauty can continue living. We give God the glory and honor our Creator with the gifts He has given us. When I get into a, a space where I'm painting, it sometimes can feel very sacred. And I'm constantly reminded of a song that is it's by Jim Krogert and Steve Bell sings it. And uh, it's called, Why Do We Hunger for Beauty? And I really believe that it's God in us. God's Spirit wants us to enjoy the art around us. He wants us to enjoy the glory of who He is and what He has created us to, to be. Not only can we dwell in the, the grandeur of God's creation, but we can find beauty in such incredible details like the frost on the window, as he says, or, or, or the way the light plays with shadows. We can find beauty in the most mundane and ordinary things if we only look for it. And I think that is so important to look for the beauty instead of looking for the negativity. Look for what is beautiful in this world. Look for the goodness. Look for what's positive. Enjoy each brush, brush stroke for what it is on its own, for, for also for how it contributes to the rest of the painting, right? It stands alone, but it also has a part to play, just like we do. These are things that we can dwell on. These are things that we can appreciate and let us be drawn closer to God by. What do you dwell on? On the mistakes that you've made? Where you've failed God? Where you go, I just need another chance. I need to do it over again. Or do you dwell on the evil in the world? The pain, the negativity around you? We need to dwell on what's beautiful and what reflects who God is. So, as I may have mentioned, I, I um, <laughs> I'm inspired by King David and the Psalms and just the peace that he seems to uh, be able to experience uh, throughout so many of the things that he's written. And uh, a man who had second chances, right? Um, as we know. So I, I just wanna read, I just wanna read Psalm, Psalm chapter one. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. It's King David. Why do we hunger for beauty so right? Why do
So I came across a, um, a little story and I just wanted to read it to you to kind of close uh, this, this video, this chapel. And it, uh, it's called Two Wolves. A Cherokee elder was teaching his young grandchildren about life. A fight is going on inside me, he said to the boy. It is a terrible fight and it is between two wolves. One is evil. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, self-doubt, and ego. The other is good. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and inside every other person too. The boy thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The elder simply replied, the one you feed. So to close, what are you feeding? Are you feeding your ego? Are you feeding negativity, evil? Or are you feeding joy, love, compassion, kindness? Well, we always, we always want to be feeding what is good in our life. And if we don't, we do get a second chance because God gives us second chances. And so I just want to challenge you today, tomorrow, this week, this year, to put aside what is wrong, to put aside what you don't like about your life, you don't like about the world around you, and to focus on what is beautiful, focus on what you see around you that, is, that comes from God, the goodness, the beauty, because we do have a hunger for beauty. Um, I think God gives people gifts, and I think just, um, I think everyone's an artist in some way, like just um, the ability to get it from your head onto paper is sometimes difficult for people. But I think everyone's like creative and I think that's what an artist is. Yeah, I definitely think that everyone has a talent from God and so if you're just using that talent, it's praising God even if you don't know it or if you don't believe in God. <laughs>